Y'all, y'all ready to finish strong today? 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 7 and 8, the Apostle Paul, he was writing to his mentee, to his spiritual son, and he was near the end of his life at the time when he was writing this letter to him, and he said this, he said, I fought the good fight, I have finished the race, and I've remained faithful. And now the prize awaits me, the crown of righteousness with the Lord, the righteous judge, will give me on the day of his return. And the prize is not just for me, but all who eagerly look forward to his appearing. Listen, y'all, Paul finished strong. I want to finish strong. I want to see everybody here in this room to finish strong. Listen, hopefully... None of us in here are at the end of our life almost like Paul was when he was writing this, right? But we all know that tomorrow's not promised to us. It's not. Life is short. And I know this season is super busy and hectic and we're running around. And we can forget like every day is a gift. You woke up today, you got air in your lungs. Your, your heart's still beating. You're here. This past week, I, I, I was at two different funerals. One was for... A, a, a beloved member of our church. Some, uh, some of y'all know him as Pops. He used to always sit right back there in the back on his red scooter. He'd roll in on his red scooter every Sunday. Pops was a, a, a great brother. Passed away, he was 79 years old. But even though he was 79 years old, more importantly than that is nine years ago, he had a new birth and he started a relationship with Jesus right here at Crossover. Yeah. And he got baptized with a whole bunch of his family in the parking lot on one of our big baptism days back in 2015. And his life was changed, and he was a different guy. Every Sunday when he would come in in his red scooter and sit back there and worship, and he would talk to me out in the lobby, he would leave church and and ride his scooter from here all the way to the VA hospital. And at the VA hospital, he would visit veterans. He was a veteran himself, and he would visit people and cheer them up and pray for them. He'd give them some tracks and some flyers, and man, God was using that guy. We're going to miss him. Pray for Pop's family as they're, as they're grieving the loss of him. Those of us in here that, that knew him and loved him. This past week, my wife and I, we had to uh, fly out to Los Angeles to go to a funeral to celebrate the life of uh, Melanie Roberts. And uh, she was the wife of Pastor Phil, Phil the Voice. She led worship here at our church a couple of years ago. Pastor Phil preached here that day. Uh, Phil has wrapped at Flavor Fest multiple different times. And she had a battle with cancer the last couple of years. And so, uh, man, it was tough. It was tough. Please pray for Pastor Phil, the kids. Pray for their church, Nations Church LA. Man, tomorrow is, is not promised. It's not. It's heavy sometimes. But you know what? You're still here today. I'm here today. I still got an assignment. I got got a mission on my life right now. And so do you. If you got air in your lungs and your heart is still beating. In Hebrews chapter 12, it gives us some encouragement of how to finish strong. And it says this. It says, therefore, since we're surrounded by such a huge crowd of witnesses to the life of faith, Let us strip off every weight that slows us down, especially the sin that so easily trips us up. And let us run with endurance the race that God has set before us. And how do we do this? We do this by keeping our eyes on Jesus, the champion who initiates and perfects our faith because of the joy awaiting him. He endured the cross, disregarding its shame, and now he's seated in the place of honor beside God's throne. The writer of scripture here is challenging us to strip off every weight that slows us down. And and some of you have some weights today that are holding you down. You have some weights today that are holding you back. Some of you feel like you're drowning right now. You know what, before we go any farther in this service today, I want to pray for you. If you're here today and you would say, Pastor T, I've I feel like, man, I got some stuff that's holding me back. I want to finish strong, but I can't. I want to ask you to do something crazy. I want to just come forward. Come forward right now. I want to pray for you. Before we move any farther in this service, just 
Come on down. Come on down. Step up a little closer so everybody can fit. A lot of people coming down. If you're worshiping online with us, just type in the chat, pray for me. If you're in the crowd here, I don't want you to just spectate. I want you to participate. I want you to just reach a hand towards your family that's up here that's like, man, I got some things that just need to break free of today. And if you're down here, I, I want you guys to just lift your hands and sign a surrender to God. Let me pray for you today. Father, I just come before you today. I lift up my family that stepped out, out of their seats today in front of everybody else and said, man, I got some things that have been weighing me down some things that have been holding me back, some things that have literally maybe made them feel like they're drowning right now. Some of them are drowning in sorrow. Some might be drowning in emotional, overwhelming feelings that they're having right now, drowning in depression. Some people might be financially feeling like they're drowning. God, you know exactly what they're going through right now, what they're feeling, what their situation and circumstance is right now. Father, I pray you're just going to touch each and every person that's down here right now. God, I pray that they will be able to finish 2023 strong. And God, I even pray in the scripture it talks about some of the sin that can trip us up. God, I pray if anybody down here is, is wrestling with some sin issues, maybe some addiction issues, and it's been tripping them up and it's been holding them back and it's been slowing them down, I pray in Jesus' name for freedom today. Freedom right now in Jesus' name. Break those chains. The break free. I pray for deliverance right now in Jesus' name. To touch them right where they're at, God. Give them exactly what they need in this moment. God, we love you today. We know that we can have freedom and we can finish strong only with your help. Not on our own power, not on our own willpower or strength, or, but God, only with you. God, may they lean in and rely 100% on you in these next few weeks. And I pray even at this moment, God, change is happening in Jesus' name. We pray all these things. Everybody said amen. Amen. Come on, give it up for Jesus today. Yeah. You could just give, give, give somebody a hug before they go and sit down today. Well, give somebody a hug. Show them some love today. So grateful you guys are here. Look at the person next to you and say, welcome to church. We're going to get it in today, y'all. We're going to get it in today. I'm excited because we are starting a brand new series. We only got a few more weeks of 2023, and, and today we're starting a series called Finish Strong. Somebody say Finish Strong. Finish strong. For those worshiping online, if you just type in the chat, Finish Strong, type it in there. And uh, come on, make some noise for all the online people. Grateful you guys are tapping in today. Listen, uh, all of us, we got some race to run. We got some more race to run so I'm not saying we're coming to the end, but we're coming to the end of a lap, and that lap of 2023, and we can get tempted when we're getting to the end of the lap that, man, we're tired, and, and, and we see, see the ending, and, and we can tap out. Look at the person next to you and say, don't tap out. Don't tap out. Come on. These last couple of weeks could be your best weeks of 2023. Does anybody believe that? So these next couple of weeks, we're going to give you some tools and some resources and empower you guys to, to finish strong. Um, you can cut that music. I'm just going right into the sermon, brother. We're, we're, going, we're, we're preaching now. It's all good, man. <laughs> so I'm ready to roll, man. So we're going to talk about finishing strong in our finances. We're going to talk about finishing strong in our family. We're going to talk about finishing strong in our faith. Those are key, key pressure points that can weigh us down. And if we get entangled in some of the wrong things, man, it can hold us back. So today we're going to start with our finances. How many of y'all know this has been one of the most challenging financial years that our country has seen in a long time? Anybody felt that inflation? Yes, sir. Yesterday's price is not today's price, is it? I mean, everything has gone up from groceries to car insurance. Anybody seen them car insurance bills? 
I got two teenagers. Pray for me. Pray for me and my wife. Car insurance bills are crazy. Homeowners insurance, um, rent. I mean, anything you can name, it has gone up. It's much more expensive to live. And guess what city in the United States have the highest inflation rate in the country? Yeah, pop that up, pop that up. Look at that, y'all. We were number one. Tampa Bay, 7.3% inflation this past year. Not far behind us was another Florida city, Miami. And you can kind of go down the list there. But man, we have felt it like crazy. Now, if you lived here before the pandemic, which half of you didn't. <clears throat> we love y'all. Welcome. Tampa was one of the most affordable places to live. And then Tom Brady came, the pandemic came, and the secret got out that, oh, man, we can move to Florida. Like, it's cheaper, and there's not as much taxes, and the weather is great, and, oh, man, and did they come. <laughs> they came. And Hillsborough County, Pasco County, Polk County, some of the main counties in the Tampa Bay area, uh, the last three years were some of the fastest growing counties in the United States. Uh, so there was some actual quarters. Uh, Hillsborough County was number one. Polk County was number one. Like, Pasco County was number one. So there was literally hundreds of thousands of people that were moving here. And so with all the demand, there wasn't enough supply. And so that's why prices started to shoot through the roof even faster. They went up everywhere, but especially here. And so uh, if we look at how expensive it got in the past five years, um, let, let's put that next one up. Uh, we weren't number one. We were number two. <laughs> but since 2017, uh, prices have went up 33.2% in the Tampa Bay area. Wow. I know that most of us in here have probably not seen a 33.2% uh, a, a raise in the past five years, right? So we're feeling the squeeze, right? Because everything has gotten so much more expensive and there's, man, there's less money to do everything with, right? So, so how do we finish strong when we feel weak? I'm going to talk about that today. This is an area that is a pressure point for so many of us today. And I want to encourage you guys, take some notes today, um, write it down. Or if you haven't downloaded the Crossover app, you can download that, type it in. And so all that news and all those graphs, they can sound bad and look scary, right? But let's remember this. We're going to start right here and talk about this, y'all, this fact. Somebody say facts. God's economy is different than the world's economy. Let me say that one more time for the people in the back. God's economy is different than the world's economy. How many of y'all know that? I don't know. I, I'm not convinced. That, that wasn't that great. I only hear a couple of y'all hollering like, like, man. There we go. Okay. Listen, family, I've been adulting now for over 25 years. That's a thing. And so uh, during some of the roughest economic seasons for me, as an adult, I can kind of look back and trace what God did. And during some of the roughest years economically in the culture, God did the most miracles. God did the most miracles. I could go back and think and look. And, and when you're following Jesus, let me tell you, when you're following Jesus and you're faithful and you're doing the things you're supposed to, like you're going to notice that. Like God's economy is different than the world's economy. Uh, in 2008 to 2010 was kind of known as the Great Recession. And it was challenging here in Florida, if, if any of you were around back then, only a couple of you were. Um, but uh, it, it was a challenging time because Florida was built on tourism and it was built on growth. And both of those things stopped, right, during that time. The recession was a difficult time. And so, but during that time, 2008 to 2010, uh, Crossover Church, uh, we raised over half a million dollars to get ready to move into this building. And we sold our, and our, by the way, our church was much younger then and much smaller then. And, and God was able to help us raise that money. Uh, and we sold our old location uh, for the asking price in the toughest real estate market that Florida had ever seen. So miracles, y'all. Miracles. We, we shouldn't be here. We shouldn't be in this building. And even the past couple of years with all the extra costs and all the things going up, like, man, we've watched God be faithful, open up doors, take care of things. This has blown my mind. And I can personally absolutely testify like God's economy is different 
than the world's economy. And so before we dive into some of the practical steps to kind of help us finish strong financially, uh, we got to remind ourselves of this fundamental truth that it really underpins our entire existence. You know what that is? It's God's ownership. He owns everything. He owns it all. Psalm 24, 1, it tells us, uh, the earth is the Lord's and everything in it. What in it? Everything. Every, everything, right? The world and all its people belong to him. So write this down if you're taking notes. God made everything and he owns everything. He made it all and he owns it. Like this includes our finances. So understanding that principle right there, that everything we have, it belongs to God. That helps us align, you know, helps us align with our financial decisions in his will. And so we got to remember, you can't take any of this with you, y'all. You just get to hold it for a little while. And so God calls us to be managers and stewards of it for a season. You know what that season is? That season is the dash between our birth and our death. We all got a dash. And that's the season that we get to hold this stuff for a little while. And so I want to ask you guys, take inventory. Have you been faithful with the resources God has given you so far in your dash? And I hope your dash lasts a lot longer, right? But have you been faithful or have you allowed like, like earthly desires and fear? Have you allowed some of that to guide your financial decisions? If we're honest, probably all of us at some different seasons have gotten off track and, and so what's one of the first ways we can become faithful with our finances? Here it is, y'all. Put God first in your finances. Put him first, y'all. Put him first. It's that simple. But it's not that easy, is it? Proverbs chapter 3, verses 9 and 10, it says, Honor the Lord with your possessions and with the first produce of your entire harvest. Then your barns will be completely filled and your vats will overflow with new wine. Now, when it says the first of your produce, your harvest... That means the first of your increase. When this scripture was written, it, when a lot of the Bible was written, most people worked in agriculture. They worked in farming or they, they worked around it. So this, this kind of language of, of harvest and produce, a lot of times that's what people brought um, to the church to say, here, take this and use this for God's work, right? And so the first and the best is also referred to as the tithe. Anybody heard about the tithe before? If you didn't know the tithe, it's in the Bible. It comes from the Hebrew word, uh, mahaser, which means a tenth or 10% of somebody's income or their crops was given back to God. So I'm curious, anybody in here at some point in your life, you, you tithed before? A anybody? Okay. Look around the room. It's a lot of people that at some point they've tithed, they, they've, they've given 10% of their income. Now, let, let, let me ask you to be really honest. How many of y'all were afraid to do it? <laughs> you were like, well... I'm looking at the spreadsheet here, looking at my budget, like, man, I'm not sure how that's going to, like, make sense. Like, I don't know how I could give 10%. Um, man, to think about giving 10%. And, and notice, there is no inflation with God. It's still 10%, by the way. That, has, that hasn't gone up. It hasn't gone up, y'all. <laughs> but how many of y'all have tried it and did it for a season, and then you watch God show up and do miracles in your life? Anybody got a story. Look around the room. There's a lot of people that can, can testify to that. And, uh, and, and sometimes it can be hard to pinpoint a miracle, can it? Like, because you can start like rationing all, all these thoughts, like, you know, rationalizing with yourself, like, well, maybe that happened because of this and this and that and the other. And we can do that with a lot of things. But for me personally, I, I know for me and my wife, like when, when we have been generous, uh, we've, we've been tithers since the beginning of, of our marriage and we give above and beyond that um, so many different times. Uh, man, we've noticed, like, that's one of the biggest areas we can see miracles in our life, like tangible miracles, because here's the thing, we can trace it back. We got a budget, and we can look at what the bills are, what this and this is, and then we can see, like, there's still money left over. How is that? Like, like how, anybody ever experienced that before, and you're like, that, that overflow, and you're like, man, like, you see God working, like, God's economy really is different than the world's economy, and, and you can also advance in a bad economy. Did you know that? Every time that there's been a rough economy, personally for me, and I know personally for the church, our church, I've watched our church move forward. It doesn't make sense. Like, you, you should see all kinds of impact and, and everything, but, I, but I've watched our church move forward. Why? Because new doors have opened. 
God, God showed us new information. There, there, was, there was new connection. There was supernatural things that happened. And so even right now, as we're getting ready to go into 2024, and, man, uh, the economy is, is challenging and debt is at record high levels. I just read this week that uh, uh, car payments defaulting are at the highest level ever in history right now. There's like 6 million people that are more than 60 days behind on their car payments. And, and I mean, it's like, so you look at all those things, and like there's an election next year, and you know it's going to get crazy with that. There's war in the world, and there's all these things. But I ain't scared, y'all. I'm not scared. Because God's economy is different than the world's economy, and, and he's going to take care of us. And, and I believe there's going to be all kinds of new doors and new things he's going to show us and new things that are going to happen in 2024. And so look at your neighbor and say, don't be afraid. We don't have to be afraid, y'all. That's good preaching. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Somebody's excited, Pastor Christopher. Let's go. So one way you can financially finish strong these last couple weeks and maybe make a new habit right now is to say to God, you know what? I I'm going to put you first. I'm going to bring my best. I I'm going to tie these last couple weeks of the year. I'm going to watch you show up. Proverbs 11.25, it says this. It says, the generous will prosper those who refresh others themselves will be refreshed. And some of you in here, you have a gift of generosity. You love to help others. You love to give to others. You love to serve. Some of you have uh, a gift of, of giving. Um, so, so some of you, like Melanie, at the, the celebration of life this past week that we we're at in L.A., she had a gift uh, of giving gifts, and she had a gift closet in her house. And when somebody would come over her house, uh, she would always, like, know what the gift was. Hey, I got something for you. And, and she would have something customized for, like, each person. Some of you, you have that gift of, of like, giving. And, and so right now, speaking of that, like, so many of you are running around looking for the perfect gift for somebody else for that thing that's coming up in two weeks. Some of y'all haven't even started, right? You haven't even started your Christmas list yet, right? But, but here we are running around getting gifts for everybody else for Christmas, and we want to celebrate, we want to bless some other people and tell them we appreciate them. No, that's good. That's great. But I asked this a couple of weeks ago. What are you guys getting the birthday boy? Whose birthday is it? Who are we celebrating? We're celebrating Jesus' birthday. Whether you want to argue or not, well, he wasn't really born on December 25th. Like, just be quiet. Like, we're celebrating his birthday. He came at some point. <laughs> we're going to celebrate it now. Okay? So y'all don't got to get all into all that stuff, right? But we're celebrating Jesus' birthday. So, so I want to ask you, what are you bringing the birthday boy? What are you doing to honor him and further his work? One of the things that God has put on our church's heart to further the work of Jesus, not just on a Sunday or when we have a, an event or a service here, but to further his work every day is we're building a coffee shop in our lobby that's going to be open seven days a week. And so some of you might be, yeah, you can celebrate that. It's going to be awesome. I know that some of you guys here, you might be new. You might not really know what's going on. you got those signs out there. You see there's some construction. The lobby is kind of dusty and and everything. Uh, that's what's happening out there. We're building uh, a space that's going to be open seven days a week where people can come. College students can come. Business people can come. Church people can come. Community people can come. And that space is going to be open. And we know like ministry is going to happen. People are going to be stepping into this building seven days a week and, and they're going to experience God's presence. They're going to be curious about, man, I need to come maybe check this place out. Like God is going to use um, coffee beans to touch people's lives, y'all. How many of y'all believe that? So this past week, we just passed another round of inspections with the inspectors. And so they came, and uh, at the bottom of each one of the posts that are out there, uh, they're cemented in now. The cement is in. Uh, they put cement in the stairways that are outside and inside. And so we're making progress. It's continually moving forward. Little by little, step by step, we're going to see that thing finished up. And so uh, this month, we had a goal. I shared it a few weeks ago. We're praying to raise $75,000 to help finish up the coffee shop in excellence, that we get that thing totally done in the next couple of months. And so I ask you guys, pray about how you can participate in that. Pray about, like, like that could be your gift to Jesus for the work of Jesus before the end of the year. So pray about that. Listen, if all of us do something, there's a lot of people that are part of our church, between the people that come to both services and people that worship online, if everybody prays about it and does something, you know, and sacrifices a little something extra, like, we could easily reach that goal. We could easily exceed that goal. We're going to watch that coffee shop then 
Here's the other part about it. It's not just going to do all that ministry during the week, but all of the proceeds from the coffee shop are going to go to Love Our City. And so we're going to be able to take ministry and outreach to a whole nother level. So it's coffee with a cause, y'all. It, it is. And so uh, if you want to give in the next couple of weeks to that project, um, use the rebrand tab uh, when you give digitally. If you give physically and drop it in the drop box or mail it in, uh, make sure you just write on the envelope or the check or whatever um, the word rebrand so we can know it's designated towards that. And so how many of y'all believe we're going to see God do a miracle? He's going to do it, y'all. He's going to do it. And there's people from the outside that are giving as well. I was at an event on Thursday, and somebody came up to me and said, hey, man, our foundation is writing you guys a check for the coffee shop this week. So I'm like, man, like, God, God, God does surprises. His economy is different than the world's economy. He shows up when you're faithful, y'all. I know some of you guys, you have some big financial decisions maybe to make even in the next couple of weeks. And, and look what James chapter 1, verse 5 says. It says, if you need wisdom, who do we ask, y'all? What kind of God is he? He's a generous God. He's not stingy. He's a generous God. He's going to give you that wisdom. He's not going to rebuke you for asking. Um, how, how many of you are parents and you want your kids to come to you for wisdom, right? We want that. They usually don't, do they, right? Not until they're really in trouble, right? But, man, God is like, man, you're, you're my kids. Like, come to me for, for wisdom. I want to give you guidance. And if we commit our financial plans to the Lord, asking for his guidance in, in our budgeting, in our investing, in our spending, in our giving, guess what? God's going to give it to you. God's going to show you the way. If you're taking notes today, write this down. This is a key part to finish the year financially strong, y'all. Create a solid plan to become debt-free. Notice I said the word solid. Because some of y'all got a plan, but it, it ain't that solid. It, it, you, ain't, you ain't following through with it. You ain't doing nothing with it. It's just there. But you're still going to the mall. You're still going out to eat. You're still getting DoorDash, paying three times the amount. Well, it's, you know, if you just go to the store. Come on. Listen, the reality is um, if you have some debt, you're not going to get it all paid off probably in the next couple of weeks. But, but you, you can be, begin to set a solid plan up now to go into 2024 strong, to be disciplined and on point, to get free hopefully next year, uh, maybe in the middle of next year, right? Uh, especially if you don't add any more debt in the next couple of weeks during the holidays. That's what so many people tend to do, don't they? We overspend during the holidays. We, we see a gift, and we're going to spend this amount, but we spend beyond it. And, and then we see some, some sales and some deals, and we end up buying some stuff for who? Ourselves. You weren't even supposed to buy that TV. You weren't even supposed to buy that thing. I'm talking to somebody right now. Like, just, just come on. What you got is okay, right? And um, I talk about debt and over-leveraging in, in my book, Gotta Be the Shoes, and share some stuff in there as well. How many of you guys can agree that, that debt, being debt-free feels so much better? Anybody ever been debt-free? Feels good, doesn't it? Anybody ever been debt-free and then you got in debt again? <laughs> it especially doesn't feel good then. You're like, oh, man. Here we are again. How did we get here, man? And listen, it's so much better than just a good feeling. It's so much better than knowing, like, man, I'm not paying all this extra interest, right? Um, but, but here's what Proverbs 22, 7 warns us. It says, um, the rich rules over the poor, and the borrower is servant to the lender. Or some translations say slave to the lender. You can become a slave to your debt. You can become a servant to your debt. Because you couldn't wait for something and save up for it, you had to put it on a card, and now you're paying double the amount for it. But Pastor T, it was on sale. It's not anymore. <laughs> After you paid all that interest... You paid way more than the retail price, even though you bought it on sale. And that's how they get you sometimes, right? And so if you would just be disciplined, right? Because you, you get all this debt and you're working more, you're stressing more, you're fighting more. Um, it can be a spiritual battle that can hold you back and literally make you feel like you're drowning. It can overwhelm you, y'all. Anybody been there before and it's like, man, it ain't worth it. The stuff is not worth it. Now, listen, there's all kinds of extra ways that, that you can try to knock down the debt, obviously create a budget. I'm just curious, how many of y'all got a budget in here? How many of y'all got a budget? Man, oh, Jesus, help us. <laughs> I was hoping every hand would go up like I had a budget. Like some of y'all just like, boop, boop, boop. Man, got to get a budget. You got to get a plan 
And, and, and if you are in debt, there's, there's some things you can look at when you map everything out, what your expenses are and what your bills are, and you can say, okay, what are we spending on? And may, maybe there's some areas you could cut some spending down. Because how many of y'all have ever got to the end of the month, you're like, where did everything go? And if you add it up, all the times you ate out, you're like, oh, my gosh, we spent $832 on eating out? Oh, man. But if you make a budget, if you're strict, if you're looking at all those things, and it doesn't mean it's going to totally change your lifestyle. You're, yeah, you're going to have to deny a few things here and there. Um, but, man, it, it can work if you make a budget. But if you're just, just, just sliding that card every time. Or, and that's not even sliding anymore. It's tapping. You know. <laughs> Some of y'all fancy now. You got Apple Pay and all that for all the Apple people, right? And just like, just a, it's just a little, right? That's all it is. It's so easy, right? Uh, how many people have heard of the debt sm snowball before? Uh, so the debt snowball, you look at all your debts that you have, right? And you keep paying the minimum payment on all of them. But the smallest one that you have, um, you put extra money towards that until you knock that thing out. And then once you knock that thing out, you take the minimum payment on that and move it up to the next smallest thing and any extra money. And you keep, and it just kind of snowballs. And as you keep paying debts off, those minimum payments that you are paying, you keep paying them, but you're applying them to the next thing up on the list. And quicker and quicker, it snowballs until you can knock things out and knock your debt out and you can get financially free. There's a lot of little tricks you can do. Look it up. There's, there's lots of stuff on, online, right? Uh, we offer Financial Peace University. Uh, shout out to Lee, Lee and Carissa. They, they did Financial Peace University this past year. And, uh, and we're going to do it again in the future. It's to help families get on point financially. Right? So stay tuned. We're going to have other classes like that coming up in the new year. I also encourage you guys, create some other streams of income. You kind of got to do that nowadays, don't you, right? King Solomon, the richest man that ever lived. Uh, we talked about him last week a little bit. Ecclesiastes chapter 11, 2, he says this. He says, but divide your investments among many places, for you do not know what risks may lie ahead. So on one hand, like God's economy is different than the world's economy. But on the other hand, we also have to use some wisdom because we don't know what's coming up next. But God can show you sometimes. God can show you some different investments, some different things to do that's going to help you for the things that lie ahead. So I want to tell you, if you're investing, like, be careful, be wise, do your research, talk to people, get proof. I know a lot of people talk a good game out there, and people invest in stuff, and it's not even a great investment, and they lose their money, right? Um, so, man, like, talk to other people about it. Another way is to create, uh, create some other streams of income and start a business, start a side hustle. Any, any, any entrepreneurs in the building? Man, we got a lot here across the All right. If you didn't know... Like, we have an entrepreneur ministry here. We want to equip you guys and empower you guys. It's called Crossover Preneurs. And if you don't know about it, like, tap in with them. They regularly have a table in the center of the lobby. They're doing a growth group right now on Zoom every Wednesday night. It's free. You could tap into that. Uh, man, there's so much great wisdom in that group. People are sharing information. They're helping each other with their businesses, giving each other ideas, there's coaching, there's mentoring, there's all kinds of great stuff. And even a lot of that is organic and it's happening. There's about 150 people that have been plugged in with the crossover preneurs so far. And I know there's a lot more. So we are constantly wanting to help you guys grow. We want to empower you guys to win. Um, curious, is anybody here like uh, just like a 1099 worker or they're just like a contract worker? That, that's like just what you do. Uh, if you were a 1099 worker, a contract worker, during the pandemic, you know what, if you got COVID or you had to quarantine at any point, there's money that you can get back from the government right now. Because if you worked at a job and you got COVID or you had to quarantine, your job had to pay you for 10 days. Some of y'all know about that. You were like, you had COVID every other week. <laughs> well, that was my daughter. We just stopped doing that, all right? <laughs> they caught on to it after a little while, right? But listen, if you were just like an Uber driver or a contract worker and, and you got sick or you had to quarantine, like nobody was paying you. You were out of, you were out of luck. But there's actually some funding the government's giving right now. It can, thousands of dollars people are getting this. So today, actually after this service in classroom one, if that's you and you during the pandemic were that, we got someone to give you some sauce, some information on that. Anytime we hear about stuff that's legit, we're going to let you guys know because we want to see you guys be financially free. We want to see you guys grow in every area of your life, amen? So, write this down. Embrace a biblical mindset on money. 
embrace a biblical mindset on money. If you want to finish this year strong in our finances, uh, we've got to adopt a biblical mindset on wealth. And that's, that's, that's one of the things. We, some of us have a poverty mindset. We have a scarcity mindset. And, and I'm, not, I'm not saying we have to have a prosperity mindset on the other hand. No, we can have an abundance mindset. You know what that is? That, that's a biblical mindset. And we don't have to be afraid because God's economy is different than the world's economy, right? Matthew chapter 6, Jesus shared this, and he reminds us this. Chapter 6, verse 19 through 21, Jesus said this. He said, don't store up treasures here on earth where moths eat them and rust destroys them, where thieves can break in and steal, but store up your treasures in heaven where moths and rust cannot destroy. Thieves do not break in and steal. Wherever your treasure is, there the desires of your heart will be also. Most of us think about physical investments, right? And, and that's wise to do. It's wise to invest in a home, maybe invest in some real estate, maybe invest in the stock market, invest in a, a good startup, invest in a solid crypto project that's out there, right? Cool. But look at me, y'all. All that's still temporary. It's all temporary. And, and, and it's great, and I'm an advocate of, like, creating generational wealth, and so you can pass that on to your kids and, and your kids' kids, right? And, and that's awesome. But guess what? For your kids, it's temporary. For your kids' kids, it's temporary. All that's temporary. Far, far, far greater than all those investments is your eternal investments. So we always think about ROI, return on investment. What's my return on investment if I invest in this thing or whatever, right? But man, what about your eternal ROI? What are you doing? And that's what Jesus is talking about here in Matthew chapter 6. He's saying, store up your treasures in heaven. The work you do for Jesus when you serve other people, uh, when, when you're generous, when you give, when, when you share the gospel, when you encourage someone, when you pray for someone, like all those things, like guess what? That pays dividends in heaven. It does. I mean, the Bible even talks about, like Jesus said, like you give a cup, cup of cold water in my name, it'll be remembered. Right? And now, we don't know exactly what that's going to look like. We don't know exactly what those dividends are. And, and I think God made it that way on purpose. And I've shared this before because I think if we saw exactly what we were getting, we would have the wrong motives and mindset. You know, like what if you could log in on your app, your heaven app, <laughs> and you could just go and see like, like what your account is, right? Like, man, my account is, it's all right. But, man, I'm going to go do that. I, I'm, I'm going to go. I'm going to go give some, some money to some, some poor people. I'm, I'm going to go, uh, I, I'm going to give some money in my church. I, I'm going to go serve at, at, at this place. I'm going to go tell this person about Jesus. And then you log him back in. He's like, oh, it's going up. <laughs> oh, yeah. Man, I'm doing this every day. Look, because if we could do that, we get the wrong motives. Because it's not about what we're going to get. But at the end of the day, though, we are storing up treasure. We don't know what that's going to look like exactly, but it's going to be amazing. I know the Bible does talk about mansions in heaven, streets of gold and amazing technology and stuff like we've never seen before. We're going to get to experience that, y'all. And so, and guess what? Guess how long that's going to last for? Forever. Forever. Everything here is like so short and it's temporary and it's gone. And just like Jesus said in these verses, like it gets rusty and moths can come in and eat it and thieves can come and steal it. But in heaven, those eternal treasures like they're going to be able to be used for ever. And so guess what? This week, y'all, there's some opportunities for you to store up some treasures in heaven. And you can't go to your app and see what's going to happen. You can't see any of that. But there's some opportunities right here at Crossover to, to serve. This Thursday night, we're going to be going to the neighborhood right over here on 15th Street. We're going to be giving away food um, to a bunch of people. Actually, the food we're giving away, you can't eat it, y'all. It's jerk hut. You get, get your own jerk hut. Uh, we're going to be giving away jerk cut to people in the neighborhood. Uh, we're going to have our, our stage out there. We're going to do a concert. Uh, my man Travis Doodles is bringing his ice cream truck. I mean, it's going to be a party out there. And uh, we got a bunch of artists from the church that are coming. And a uh, brother that was here at Flavor Fest, some of you may know who he is. He got a crazy testimony and story. Uh, he goes by the name of Gabbana. He's got millions of followers. He was out there doing crazy stuff on social media, went viral for it. Now he's following Jesus. He's like sold out for Jesus. And so he's coming. 
And the cool thing is, like, everybody in the neighborhood, in the hood, they know who Gabbana is because he was, he was a wild dude. And, uh, and he came to Flavor Fest. We went out in the neighborhood and did ministry, and everybody knew who he was. I mean, it was, it was a powerful ministry opportunity. So he's coming to be with us this Thursday night. It's going to be a party. So if you want to jump in on that, sign, in, sign up on the register page. Like, come out and be with us. We have affordable Christmas that's coming up uh, on Saturday. We're going to be hosting close to 100 families uh, here that are going to be able to come and shop for, for toys for their families at 10% of the actual retail price. And so they're going to feel like a hero. They got a great deal, but they're going to have some dignity. They got a little skin in the game. And we're just going to love on those people. It, it, there's so many things that are coming up at our church. There's so many opportunities for you to store up your treasure in heaven. That's the most important thing, y'all. That's the most important thing out there, period. And so next Sunday, y'all, Winter Wonderland. And we're bringing 10 tons of snow. So that's an opportunity for you to invite some friends, some family, anybody you know that has children up to fifth grade. Uh, that could be a great hook. But those kids are going to learn about Jesus. They're going to hear about Jesus in the gym before they go out and play in the snow. And we're going to be having a great service in here for all the families and adults that come. So there's opportunities for you to store up treasure in heaven right here with what our community is doing, what our church is doing. Amen? And I know the Bible says, when you're faithful in little, God will bless you with a little more. And when you're faithful with that, Matthew chapter 25, God will bless you with a little more. If you're faithful with that, God will bless you with a little more. So I want to ask you today, can God trust you with what you have right now? Because some of us haven't been doing that great, even with what we have, and we're asking God for more. And he's like, just like our kids, those of us that are parents, our kids are doing terrible with money. They keep asking for more. We ain't giving them no more. You got to learn, right? Like, we, we talked about some tools today. Like, what are you doing with your finances to finish this year strong? I want you to take some inventory. I want you to look at, like, where am I at with my, with my budget, with, with my spending, with my investing, with my, with my giving, with my generosity? Where am I at in all those categories? Where am I at with my debt? Like, how can I do better in those areas? Don't wait until January. Work on it right now. It might save yourself thousands of dollars if you work on it right now before you go and do some crazy stuff in the next couple of weeks. Amen? I want to pray for you today. If you bow your heads around the room. Father, we come before you today. And God, we, we pause and we say, sorry. <laughs> sorry for the times that we haven't managed our money well that we've spent it on things that we shouldn't have. And we didn't, we didn't ask you, we didn't talk to you, we didn't get any wise counsel from anybody else. All of us have made some financial mistakes, God, so we pause and we say sorry. All of us have gotten into debt at different points in our life. I pray for those that are here right now that might be feeling the weight of debt right now. I pray, God, that they'll get a solid plan and they'll stick to it. They'll get some accountability partners around them of some people that can push them to make the right decisions again and again. They didn't get in debt overnight, so it's not going to get out of it overnight. But God, with your help and with self-discipline, um, they can do it. They could be financially free. So God, give them the wisdom. Give them, give them the tenacity to take those steps, do what they need to. God, for those that haven't been giving, haven't been generous, God, and they've been holding back, God, I pray that they'll open up their hearts and they'll, they'll give to your work. They'll give to others. They'll be generous. They'll be open-handed and realize that when we give, God, you, you give back to us. You take care of us. You're generous. Just as Scripture says, as we refresh others, you refresh us. So, God, I pray for my family today. God, I want to see them be financially strong, financially free. And, God, I pray even today as we have an opportunity to close this service out and have an action step and, and give right now towards your work. God, I pray you'll just help us to trust you. Help us to trust you, and we're going to watch you show up and do miracles. We pray this in Jesus' name. Everyone said, amen. amen. Come on, give it up for Jesus today. Yeah.